As spring breaks in Cock County, Tennessee, lifelong friends and notorious outlaw shiners Mark and Digger visit their associate Kelly, a master deal maker at acquiring large quantities of raw ingredients. What are you doing, boss? Oh, just hanging around here. Hanging out. Kelly is a guru when it comes to sourcing anything. I got something I want you to try. Sorghum, it's only one time a year that you can even get it. Damn, son. How much of it you got? 1,000. All these things is full of sugar? 20,000 pounds. I got something you're going to love. <laughs> what is it? It's beer, man. Well, good. Let's have a party. No, this is not drinking beer. This is bad beer. What do you mean bad beer? Why would you bring bad beer? Yeah, who drinks bad beer? Well, what they told me was they didn't sell none of it. And all of these pallets that they've got went through a hot and cold process, a temperature change, too many times to use it. God almighty, that's nasty. Good. The only thing I'm certain of right now, this beer's not drinkable. You couldn't sell it for a nickel right now. It's that bad. Why can't we use it to make good liquor with? So we ain't got to use no sugar. We ain't got to use no corn. We ain't got to use nothing. We can just pour all this stuff into a, a pot. You know, the good thing about this is bad beer still has good alcohol in it if we can turn it into something drinkable. You might be able to get some good liquor out of it, but it's going to have to stretch to overcome this. You never know. I mean, it might be really good liquor. I mean, all we're doing is taking the alcohol out of it, so who knows? I'll go as far as to help you dump the beer out, because it'll take a while. But now, I ain't, I ain't going to be in the damn woods of distilling none of it. I mean, if you want to run it, lay it to it. Well, I want to know how to. I ain't never done nothing like this, so I want to know how to make it work the best that we can. Is there anybody that we can go to that's done this? Well. I'm going to say that Amanda Bryant would be her best choice to come in here. This is just a whipped cream maker. You know, in a regular restaurant, you put cream in here. It's nitrogen dioxide. So we're going to pressurize, and we're just going to force the alcohol into the walnuts. Let me give her a call and see if she's free. She's been asking if she could come down here and work with me and Mark. And this is about as close as we can put her at this point. Good enough. Ah. Ah. You know, at the end of the day, I don't know of anybody that sets their standards for their liquor in the backwoods world any higher than me and Mark have. And that's going to carry through with anybody that makes liquor for us. And we're willing to take a chance on this, see what it turns out. But if it does not turn out good liquor, then we're not willing to sell it. Well, Kelly, he's all keyed up about this beer. Well, he gets excited easy. What's up, gentlemen? What are you doing, boss? Playing beer man. I'm getting a beer out here for you guys to be able to open all of it for me. As it's going right now, me and Mark got way too many irons and fire to worry about this beer. Do you realize how long it's going to take to pour all this beer out? Well, Amanda's on her way. If she's driving a little red SUV, that's Amanda. Hey, Amanda. How you doing, guys? She's, she's done drunk, drunk a, a she, jar of liquor She's already. done drunk three quarters of a jar of liquor. I just brought you a little sample of something. I heard you guys had some beer. Digger, myself, or Kelly, neither one of us has ever just distilled beer. Yeah. Well, at least it's in cans. In cans, the sunlight can't get to it, so all that's really going bad is the grain flavor. But that's why I brought some of this distilled beer that I made back in Pennsylvania. It's like a seasonal ale, so there are spices in it. In most beers, it's malted barley and hops. So what you have, if you distill it, is a whiskey, if you can fix that hoppy flavor. There's always going to be a little bit of that hops that lingers, but then there's things you can do to cancel out the hops. Well, this right here is living proof that you can make good liquor out of beer. That's really good, Amanda. Well, thanks. Let's get to work. There's the first one, first of many. <laughs> Four of us opening these cans and dumping them out. Hopefully, we'll get through these three pallets in a few hours. Damn, this is slow go, ain't it, guys? Oh, oh, I reckon. That digger had the nice That's idea a right method there. right there. I knew this process of opening these cans was not going to be easy, but I didn't expect it to be quite so messy. We have beer in our eyes, beer in our ears, beer everywhere. I think we're all going to walk away from here smelling like an old dirty bar when we're done. Damn. Now you're going to love this. The idea is to put it in the 
coat. You know, Kelly comes up with this idea of drilling a hole. Drills them through the ends, turns them upside down, and bends them. This is still taking forever. Well, you don't know if he hits all the cans or he don't. It's running out of the box. He's really slow. You know, there's got to be an easier way of doing this. I don't know what it is. I got a heck of an idea. You're going to love it. This is going to be interesting. I hope it works. I really do. Kelly's like a hamster wheel, you know, the wheels are always turning. So he said, maybe I can take my tractor and put this beer in a kiddie pool. Well, it sounds really simple enough. You know, you take this bucket on this tractor and bust it like that. Let's set them right there side by side. I mean, it stands to reason they'll bust and spill. Then I guess you just dump it in out of the pool. I don't know. That'll be another problem when it's on, when it comes time. Got a half a beer empty. Try it without the boxes. Honestly, them cans are tougher than I thought they was. They'll dump these in there too. Oh, now we're getting somewhere. That pop. You gotta give it to them though. This is a creative idea. The thing about it is, there's more beer out on the ground now than is in the pool. Yeah, they you sloshed out about two cases. You know, we've wasted enough time with this. So we got to just take the time, open the cans, put them in the tote, and be done with it. It's nasty. It is. I ain't willing to screw up a copper pot on this beer run. With them hops in there, it's just going to annihilate it. Some of this stuff will kind of etch copper a little bit and stick and burn and scorch if it gets etched. Now, the thing about it is beer has hops in them. The oil from the hops is really hard on the copper. We really need a stainless steel pot. It should be the ideal steel to do their stripping run with. Do you know of any stainless steel pots? Back several years ago, we sold that hydrogen peroxide tank steel that popcorn had to have built. It's seven barrels. I mean, it's 350 gallons. We sold this old pot to Leroy Schultz. He's another old liquor man. and. Uh, he, he put it to good use for a number of years up until he died. And I guess that's the first place you need to look was the last place you saw it. I'll make some phone calls. I'll call y'all in the morning. We'll be headed to go find the steel. See if it'll make any quicky. And then it'll be just all up to Kelly and Amanda to turn it into liquor. I hope we hear from you in the morning. That's going to be our saving grace. Me too. I'd rather have that rascal working than it is sitting somewhere not doing nothing.